Alright, good evening ladies and gentlemen, and today we will be covering game 6 of the World Chess Championship 1886 match between Wilhelm Steinitz and Johannes Sockertort. So, uh, before this game, uh, just a little background, they changed the venue to St. Louis. Still in New York City, but there's been a change of venue. And we have Steinitz uh, is down three points, but he has the white pieces, so he will be looking to come back in this game. Uh, so, we have an opening, we have e4, very interesting stuff, e5, knight f3, and we have a Berlin defense, castles, this is uh, all uh, theory, again, you'll You'll see this about three bajillion times in any modern chess tournament. Uh, but this was somewhat new at the time. We have bishop e7, knight c3, uh, if castles, bishop d3, putting a little bit of pressure on the uh, on the h7 pawn. The computer doesn't like it, as you can see, computer wanted bishop f1. But uh, this is the 1800s, and there's, of course, potential for an attack, and that's all that matters at this point in chess's history. Uh, so we have bishop f6, just kicking this rook out. Rook e3, g6, um, just brunting the force of this bishop by preventing it from seeing the h7 pawn, and he probably intends to play bishop g7 at some point. We have b3. We have rook e8, just offering a rook trade here. Computer, as you can see, doesn't like it, but um, yeah, he's just offering a rook trade, trying to contend for control of the e file. We have queen f3, defending this rook without needing to, uh, to capture with the pawns, and also maybe applying some pressure to this bishop here. Bishop g5, uh, attacking the rook. And uh, basically forcing white to make a decision. Do you take? I mean, you have to take unless you want to play like rookie two, which just looks stupid. So basically, this kind of forces white to take. Um, now, the computer does say that you can just play bishop b2 here. Which to me seems absolutely ridiculous, and I don't think any human would do so. So Steinitz captures the rook, uh, as you can expect. We have a rook trade. Then we have bishop b2. We have c6 going for d5, trying to take control of the center. Knight e4, uh, pressure, putting some pressure on this bishop. Uh, maybe threatening to take it. Uh, if you consider that bishop worth more than the knight, which I'm not sure. Uh, we have bishop e7 back, so clearly Zuckertort did consider that bishop worth more than the knight. Uh, we then have queen e3. We have d5, just expanding in the center, attacking this knight. We have queen d4, threatening a checkmate on h8. f6. Um, just blocking this diagonal for this very powerful battery here. Knight g3, uh, just moving the knight to a safe square, and uh, one that kind of limits the bishop's options. We have bishop e6, rook e1, knight g7, defending this bishop, h4, just trying to... Um, break open the position completely. Queen d7, um, making a battery here. Probably, I imagine, he intends to move the knight, so he's trying to free up the knight from the duty of defending this bishop. Now, as you can see, the computer doesn't really like this position for black, but again, in the 1800s, uh, the computer's opinion doesn't really matter at all. Uh, we have h5. Bishop f7, we have takes, we have bishop takes, uh, offering a bishop trade here, just trying to get rid of the pieces on the board. Uh, the bishop trade is not uh, taken, but 
is offered back to black. Uh, now, of course, this bishop is attacked by the rook and queen battery, which Zuckertal defends the bishop with the king, which to me doesn't look too good, but, you know, a way of rook e8, uh, defending this bishop a third time, and also just potentially opening up uh, something like bishop d6, attacking the queen and the rook at the same time. Uh, we have rook e3. We have knight, uh, knight e6, attacking the queen, and blocking the rook's line of sight a little. Uh, but we have queen g4 here, uh, pinning the knight to the queen. Knight to f8, defending the queen, offering a queen trade. Knight f5, uh, bishop d, uh, bishop c5, sorry. Knight h6, check. King g7. Knight f5, check. King f7. Knight h6, check. King g7. Knight f5, check. King f7. Knight h6, check. King g7. Uh, now, it should be noted, in fact, that the threefold repetition, uh, I don't believe, was um, instituted in this match. There was no threefold repetition rule. I think it was sixfold repetition before a draw was declared. So, um, Steinitz is evidently just trying to gain time. We have a, rep we have a, a lot of repetition here. Steinitz um, just trying to gain some time. We have a bunch of trades. And here in this position, white ends up upper pawn um, in a same colored bishop position. So now Steinitz is going to attempt to convert this position. Uh, so we have a g4. Knight h5. We have bishop back to d6, which the computer says is a mistake. After king g2, which Steinitz finds, as uh, there is just no way to defend the h4 pawn here. So we have c5, bishop f6, knight g5, bishop takes g5, king takes g5, king h3, knight f4. And we have a bishop versus knight position here, uh, which is not always a good thing, but as you can see, this pawn is threatened. Um, and so is simply kicking the king back in some manner. Uh, so the computer recommends d4 here, which Zuckertal plays. And then we have knight e6, king f6. We have e takes d4. If c takes d4, knight to c5, uh, going for the d4 square to kick the knight off, to kick the king off of the g5 square when it comes there, or just to take that pawn. Um, then we have knight a5. Bishop comes back to defend this pawn, this pawn here. We have king e3, going after the pawns on the queen side for white, um, but the knight has already won every pawn that black has on the queen side. Uh, so we have knight b4, check, the king backs up. So Zuckertor is relying entirely, wholly and entirely, on the counterplay that he can get from the d pawn here, because it's very close to the end of the position, to the end of uh, its promotion the end of the board. And of course, um, at my level, at the 1000-ish level, um, that's not my level, I'm 1800-ish, but uh, at my level, this pawn would certainly be a problem, um, and some potential counterplay. Uh, though, of course, as long as you don't panic, you should be able to see that it's uh, significantly better for white. Um, but without the engine evaluation, it's not too easy to realize how you win this. Uh, so we have knight d5 here. The king comes in, 
just trapping the king in here. Now, if black had a rook, this would be great, but black does not. Um, and of course, this move just straight loses the bishop. Uh, so he's relying entirely on that, and uh, clearly he blundered that after knight d5, knight c3 is in time to stop the pawn from mozing. To me, it doesn't make much sense if you're going to give up the bishop to try and get a pawn promotion, surely you should just push here, um, and then you win if your opponent is a bit silly. Uh, but instead, he does not do so. And we have 95, and Zuckertort resigns, and Steinitz gets his first win since the first game of the match, his second win in the whole match, the sixth game match, so he now has closed the gap to a mere two points um, in this game. Uh, so the, you know, Steinitz, it's not, the match situation is not looking good for him, but it's certainly looking better than it was, because if, uh, of course, if Zuckertort just kept winning, that would not have been very good for Steinitz. So Steinitz, uh, well, uh, maybe I'm not spoiling much here, but uh, Steinitz does in fact win this match. <laughs> so this is uh, the game wherein the comeback begins for uh, Mr. Wilhelm Steinitz here. Uh, yeah, so that's the game. Uh, thank you for watching. Please do, uh, I don't know, hit the like button if you like the video. Subscribe if you subscribe. Uh, dislike if you dislike. Um, you know, comment if you comment, and so on and so forth. And uh, yeah, that's it. Have a good one. Have a good one.